Hey, I'm Raleigh, and I am your average pool player. Here I am in Italy with a very attractive Italian family. Psych, here I am on the streets of New York where everything's trash, except for the people. Just kidding, everything's trash. I am okay at pool. There's a bunch of people I can beat, but right behind them, there's a huge line of people waiting to kick my ass. Luckily, there are professionals who can teach you. One of those people is Jonathan Smith. John has been a pool pro for the past 19 years. He teaches lessons, plays in tournaments, and he once made 136 balls in a row against pool legend Tony Robles to clinch a spot in the BCA Championship. Today, he's agreed to teach me a thing or two about pool. So I'm going to Society Billiards, where I'm gonna learn how to get a little bit better. This is from average to good. You're breaking my heart! Stay walking. Okay, here we are at Society Billiards. It's in the basement of a furniture store, but it's the fanciest pool hall in New York by a long shot, so figure that one out. And here are some establishing shots of pool tables before my staged meeting with John and low budget graphic intro. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So John Smith is the house pro at Society Billiards, and you've also got the high run here. That's right. You work with a lot of the top level pros who come through here. Mm -hmm. Today John is going to make me feel like I should quit pool forever by crushing me. I can do that. <laughs> First, we'll play a few racks of nine ball so John can gauge my skill level. Will you let me break so that I get a shot in? Yes. That's really nice. You can nice use my break stick. Oh, ho, ho. thank you very much. You're welcome. So, this is a break stick. Um, you can tell because of the way that it is a break stick. At least I left him hooked. That's what, that's my name. I'm the hooker. Call me the hooker. I didn't make any balls in the break, but I left John behind the nine ball with no shot at push the one out. ball. John decided to play what's called a push shot, which you can do right after the break, and I gave it back to John because I didn't think he could make the bank shot. He immediately makes the bank shot. It's not going so good for me so far. And then drops the two, three, four, and five in succession. But then he tried to cheat the pocket too much with the six to get shape on the seven, and misses the six ball, giving me a shot. I made a pretty tough shot on the six and then cut the seven in, so I should be able to win this game. Uh, nope. I put way too much spin on the eight and leave myself a hard shot on the nine, which I miss. Safe. And John puts it away to win game one. Game two, John lets me break again, and I make a ball, but can't see enough of the one ball to make it. So I go for a defensive shot and try to leave the one right behind the nine. I hit it too hard, but there are a lot of balls to get behind, and I give John a tough leave. He misses the one by about a millimeter, giving me ball in hand. So I make the one, the two. Get up. Get up. Come on. Come, come on. on. Come on. Get legs. Get. Uh -huh. Do it. The three and the five. But on the six ball, for no reason at all, I decide at the very last second I want to play another safety and try to leave the cue ball behind the seven. Oh, I tried to play a safety and I fucking blew it. Turn the camera off, Andy. That's something you should never do against a pro, and he drained the six, seven, eight, and nine to win game two. Oh, picture perfect. Game three, John makes the eight on the break, hits the one and the two with backspin, cuts the three and the four down the rails, hammers the five in, cuts the six all the way down, drops the seven in to float perfectly around the nine, and drains it to win game three without letting me even pick up my cue. So, John, give it to me straight. Am I the greatest player of all time? No. Okay, well, maybe I phrased that question wrong. Am I the best player you've ever seen in your life? No. Okay. You need to review your pattern play. Okay. Thinking about the next three balls. Okay. Because um, you still haven't learned that. Okay. Um, you need to reevaluate your feet. Feet, okay. Because your heel comes up an awful lot when it should be staying flat on the ground. Oh, okay. And that adds to a little bit of instability. Um, and your pre-shot routine is non-existent. Non-existent, okay. Non -existent. I thought I had a good pre-shot routine. It's non-existent. No, it's inconsistent Oof. all the time. Oof, okay. Good to know. Yeah, I, I would watch good pool players and just what they do before every shot. Most of them you'll find they'll always chalk up and you don't chalk up, maybe you chalk up half the time. Chalking up is part of the whole ritual. Standing back, and visualizing what you want to happen. And then once you're down on the shot, 
you're just executing what you were deciding to do. When I'm up, I think about it, and then when I get down, I have to have already the plan set, figured out. Yeah, okay. I say that when you're up, you're the choreographer, when you're down, you're the dancer. The dancer does not go to the choreographer and say, I think I should be doing something else. Right. If they do, they get fired. They get, yeah, they're off the, off the dance squad. Yeah, yeah, the umbrella comes out and goodbye. Okay, you ready to run me through some drills to improve my game to the highest level it's ever been? Yes, let's go. Great. Huh? <laughs> cool.